This lesson is focused on identifying parts of the mediastinum to help you further understand the elements of chest radiology. We will identify these anatomic features, the trachea, the esophagus, and the two vascular arches of the mediastinum, the azygous arch, the blue candy cane seen on the right side of the mediastinum, and the aortic arch, the red candy cane looking from the right towards the left side. The trachea is a corrugated tube, similar to the tubes that are used for wiring a home theater system, only with cartilaginous rings. These rings are what hold the trachea open when we create negative intrathoracic pressure to breathe air. In the frontal or coronal plane, the trachea can be identified by its shape, which looks remarkably like a lambda, the Greek letter L. The carina, which comes from the Latin word meaning the keel of a ship, is at the bifurcation of the trachea into the left and right main stem bronchi. The right bronchus leads down to the bronchus intermedius, which then branches to supply the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe. When looking at the carina straight on, it appears slightly to the left of the midline, which lines the right bronchus up as a direct continuation of the trachea. That is why if you swallow something wrong, for example, if you aspirate a peanut or a piece of food, it typically goes straight down and into the bronchus intermedius of the right lung. The larger diameter of the right bronchus as compared to the left also makes it more likely for aspirated material to go down the right bronchus into the bronchus intermedius. This is also the most common site of aspiration of gastric contents when the patient is vomiting or has emesis. If we look at this coronal slice taken right through the trachea, we can see how it branches into the right and left main bronchi. We can also see some of the other anatomic features, like the arch of the aorta, the red candy cane going over the left main stem bronchus, and we can see outlined here in blue the azygous arch, the azygous vein connecting over the bronchus to the posterior wall of the superior vena cava, or SVC. Located behind the trachea and the tracheal bifurcation is the food tube, or the esophagus. If we look at this cross-section, we can see the superior vena cava, the ascending and descending aorta, the trachea, and just behind it we can see the esophagus. If we have the patient swallow radiopaque contrast material, like barium, we can see it fill the esophagus from top to bottom by peristalsis. This test is called a barium swallow and is performed using x-ray fluoroscopy with the patient typically standing up. To see the esophagus in greater detail, we have the patient turn to provide a right anterior oblique or RAO view. The patient's right anterior chest wall is against the film or the image sensor and the left chest wall pulls slightly away. The right oblique is one of the most common esophageal views. Here is a chest radiograph of a young patient who has some discomfort in the neck. Shown here is what looks like a round metallic opacity. Is that metallic opacity a disc, or is it going to be a sphere? To determine this, we need to get another view. From this lateral view, we can now see a radiopaque line. This object, round and thin, has to be a disc, most likely a coin. From the size of it, it looks to be a quarter. But is this coin in the trachea or in the esophagus? The location of the coin may also be determined just by looking at its orientation. If we examine a cross-section of the upper mediastinum, we can see that a coin that is in the trachea is going to be oriented from front to back, while a coin in the esophagus is going to be oriented from side to side. A coin in the trachea is going to be oriented from front to back in the sagittal plane because the posterior membrane of the trachea is very flexible as opposed to the inflexible cartilaginous rings that are in the anterior part of the trachea. In contrast, the normal collapsed lumen of the esophagus is oriented from side to side in the coronal plane. Moving now to the right side of the image, the red candy cane structure is going to be the aortic arch, going from front to back to connect the ascending aorta with the descending thoracic aorta. Shown also are the great arteries that branch from the top of the aortic arch. The first branch is the brachiocephalic or the anominate artery, which leads to the right subclavian and right common carotid arteries. 
Next we have the left common carotid artery followed by the left subclavian artery coming off the arch of the aorta. Notice how the diameter of the aorta changes dramatically from the ascending to the descending portions because it has already given off blood volume to these very large and important branches that have a significant amount of blood flow. Like the esophagus, the best way to see the full anatomy at the aortic arch is also from an oblique view, but now with the patient turned in the opposite direction. This is a left anterior oblique position, or LAO. One way to remember the left anterior oblique position is to remember that LAO means lay aorta open. By having the patient turn into this left anterior oblique position, we can actually look into the arch of the aorta, the red candy cane. Looking from the patient's left side into the mediastinum, the venous arch, or the blue candy cane, is now visible. You want to remember that the azagous vein ascends from the abdomen along the right side and in front of the spine. It then arches over the mediastinal structures of the right upper lobe bronchus to connect to the posterior margin of the superior vena cava and then drains into the upper portion of the right atrium. Thus, when we look at the mediastinum, we want to use the vertical structures as a kind of rubric. A lambda for the airway, the trachea and main bronchi, the esophagus or the food tube, and the two candy canes, a blue candy cane for the azagous vein and arch, and a red candy cane for the thoracic aorta.